Hello everyone, I'm José Wesley from UFMG and today I'm going to talk about type stable code in Julia language. Julia is a programming language introduced in a paper from 2012. It was created by four computer scientists from MIT. Its first version was released in November 2013 and its currently stable version is 1.6.3, released in September of 2021. Although it can be viewed as a general purpose programming language, Julia has a great focus in scientific and numeric programming. It presents many mathematical functions with high precision on the numeric values. Concerning its type system, Julia is a dynamic language. It also presents resources to parallel and distributed programming and easy integration with other languages such as C or Python. Since its early development, Julia was designed to be a high-performance language and, in fact, its speed is one of its main attractions. As the figure shows, Julia is usually faster than other languages such as Python or Fortran, and it is almost as fast as C in some cases. One key to performance in Julia is the success on determining the return type of any function call in the code. Julia uses a just-in-time compiler. That means that machine code is generated during the execution of a program. Each time a function is called with a different tuple of concrete argument types, a new specialization is generated by the compiler. That specialization provides runtime type information about the arguments. Using this, the compiler is able to apply unboxing and devirtualization. Unboxing is the conversion from reference to value types. These allow the program to manipulate values without memory references and stack allocate them. The virtualization is an optimization that is able to decide statically which specialization of a function is to be called. It avoids the cost of multiple dispatch and enables inlining of colleagues. Typing precision may have significant impact on the performance of Julia programs. In this example, the function get n or 0 receives a number and it returns the same number if it's greater than 0 or 0 otherwise. This function becomes time imprecise when we call it at line 8. Although that function would never return 0 since we only provide arguments greater than 0 to it, this causes efficiency problems. As the Julia REPL shows, this function is type imprecise. It can't return either a float or an integer. This happens because we always call the function passing a floating pointer value. Therefore, if the function returns n, the type of the return is float64. However, if it returns 0, set 0 is an integer, which causes the imprecision. This is the running time of this program. Since Julia cannot predict the return type of this function at compilation time, any computation that uses must deal with values of both types. This makes it difficult to generate fast machine code. In this scenario, it's beneficial to write code that is type-stable. According to the official Julia documentation, a function is type-stable if the type of the outputs is predictable from the types of the inputs. In particular, it means that the type of an output cannot vary depending on the values of the inputs. This figure taken from the UPSLA paper below shows examples of Julia functions that are type stable and type unstable. F0 is unstable. It returns an integer or a string. F1 is stable because it always returns an integer. F2 is stable if the negation operation is stable. This example shows that stability is a whole program property and adding a method may cause some other methods to lose type stability. Back into our example, we can make function get n or 0 type stable by changing line 2 to use the function 0. 
This function returns a value corresponding to the zero value for a given type. As REPL shows, the function now can only return a 64-bit floating pointer value when invoked with a floating pointer value. By making the get n or zero function type stable, the compiler is able to generate machine code that is more efficient than the previous one. Another situation that can cause type stability problems is changing the type of a variable inside the function. In this program, variable x starts as an integer, and after one loop iteration, it becomes a floating pointer number. The compiler may box x as it could hold two different types. This implied indirection to any operation performed therein. This happens in our example as well. The variable sum is initialized with an integer value, but it is incremented with floating pointing values. If we change sum to be initialized with a floating pointer zero value, we can see that this increases even further the speed of this program. This table summarizes the running time results for the different versions of the program presented here. In conclusion, writing time stable functions is a good practice. This enables Julia's compiler to generate efficient machine code, hence making your programs run faster. So that was today's talk. We saw how writing type stable functions in Julia can make your code run faster. You feel free to write me with any questions and comments. You can find the reference and the links below in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.